hi guys welcome back to my youtube channel my name is jimaima so this is the last part of my physiology series if you've not seen the part one go and see it please so that you understand where i'm coming from with that said let us continue with answering these questions if you ask the right on digestion of carbohydrates introduction very important what are carbohydrates blah 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 just short, short, short stuff write shortly that carbohydrate and um, where does it start where does it end short stuff that you can write in the introduction then you now said um the digestion of carbohydrate can be described under social headings you now start from mouth to stomach to um, do then you know just write it down and describe how the digestion starts in the mouth the enzyme that's involved you describe how as it goes down to the stomach you describe how Saliva cannot work. Salivary amylase cannot work in the stomach because of the pH. Um, salivary amylase works under an alkaline pH, but in the stomach, because of the presence of HCl, it is acidic and too acidic for salivary amylase to act on carbohydrates. So digestion of carbohydrates do not occur in the stomach. I know that it doesn't occur in the stomach, but that doesn't mean that you would leave out stomach completely. It's in better. It's better you write that head in stomach and let the examiner know that digestion of carbohydrate does not occur in the stomach than for you to just completely leave out the stomach and jump all the way down to duodenum. So you just list different stages, then all the enzymes that are involved, make sure you write them down. Then after all of that, you now mention the absorption of carbohydrate, fructose, absorption of fructose, absorption of glu glucose, absorption of galactose, and write all of those down. I think there's a diagram for this absorption. There should be a diagram for absorption. So you include especially the type. Is it by facilitated diffusion? How does it get absorbed? Write it down. Number 4B said, briefly discuss the effect of ADH in urine concentration okay um this kind of question is quite uh, or should i say quite tricky because you may be tempted to just write the effects directly but I, I am very sure that they want you to say something about its mechanism of action where it's where it's synthesized and all that so you have to write short introduction what is adh where is it synthesized what is what is the stimulus or what's what is the stimuli for its synthesis then you write that then you now mention its effect of in urine concentration okay and that's when you finish writing all these things that's when you now in, um, go down to its actual effect on urine concentration how does it affect concentrated urine how does it affect a dilute urine if you can actually add a short note on a disease what happens when there is there is inconsistency or when there is a problem with synthesis of adh when it is over secreted when it's under secreted so you can actually add that because there's no you can't write too much for these five marks because i know these people they are so stingy with their marks so 4c said highlight any five factors that can affect glomerular filtration rate this one is asked you to highlight you just list all five of them and after listing them you can just write one or two sentences under each of these headings and um 5a said I didn't answer number five by the way there are certain questions that you know you would be able to answer better than others so you, this particular question i wasn't so conversant with explaining these association areas of the brain as much as i would have explained all these other questions so that's why i didn't answer this number five but basically 5a said explain the concept of negative feedback mechanism in the maintenance of the body homeostasis with specific examples <laughs> Those of you that answer this question, how will I do one? <laughs> because this question is so broad. In fact, it's so so broad. And this this lecturer in particular is a no nonsense lecturer. The lecturer that asks this question, this five A, is the kind of lecturer that can give you one over twenty if you don't write as much as he expects you to write. So that's one of the reasons why I just left this question. It's very broad. Like you need to write. It's a full essay, so you need to start with the introduction. What is negative? feedback mechanism explain it then um you know list situations where negative feedback mechanism have been involved in homeostasis list them then you now come and start explaining it one by one by one you now start <laughs> no, no no it's not funny so that was expected of you you write a short introduction what is negative feedback mechanism you know what is homeostasis um what are the example of 
you know, phenomenon where negative feedback mechanisms are involved. You write that and um, 5B said describe two association, association areas of the brain stating their locations and their functions. This question, I strongly suggest if you're ask, answering a question like this, you need to draw a diagram to show these association areas. You need to, you know, write it down. So this one is straightforward. If they ask you to describe it, so you draw a diagram to show where they are found on the brain. Describe what, talk, what, what are these areas. You list the two areas, then draw a diagram to show where these areas are found. You state their location. You state their functions. 6A said, enumerate the different hemopoietic sites at different stages of life so this one you just list the stage the stages fetal life adult life and all that you list the stages and in each of these stages what are the sites where hemopoiesis occur you list it this one is not so difficult number six p said elucidate on the five main functions of blood now this question i don't know about your school but in my school you can't write you've not written anything about the functions of blood if you've not said something about transport so you list all the functions and you now explain them one by one not to no too much explanation just list and explain all the functions of blood i mean this question is something that even a secondary school child can answer but i know there are certain headings key headings that they expect of you so this was very easy 6c said discuss the mechanism of sweat secretion now this question is quite tricky because you need to write introduction the mechanism of sweat of sweat secretion you need to write something about the sweat gland you need to write something about the types of sweat gland the eccrine gland apocrine apoecrine you know even their secretion the eccrine secretion apoecrine secretion apocrine secretion where these glands are found what are the features of these glands you know one of them has clear secretion the other one is more of viscous you now write the mechanism of sweat secretion properly that's when you now mention the sweat gland the coiled part of the sweat gland the um, straight part of the sweat gland which component of the sweat gets absorbed and why will it get absorbed what influences it you know is it um sympathetics is it parasympathetics that influence the sweat secretion those are little things that you should say then you can also say something about the effect of antiperspirants on the sweat glands although this question depends on how your lecturer taught you but for my lecturer it's very very broad so you need to write everything you know about sweat secretion the precursor secretion or um, you know the primary secretion the precursor secretion those are things that you should just you know chip in here and there so yeah that's it oh the next video i'm going to upload will be my biochemistry questions and how you should tackle them if you face those kind of questions i remain your girl jemima <laughs>